welcome to Free Media Free Minds. Free Media Free Minds is a program that explores media freedom, diversity, and access to information. My name is Pina Vantagazi. And I'm Helga Janssen Daubia. 2014 is the fifth time South Africans will head to the polls. In our national imagination, voting still remains a critical stepping stone to the ideals of freedom. In this episode of Free Media, Free Minds, we look at the role of the media during and leading up to an election. Welcome to part one of our two-part program on media and elections. Joining us to unpack this topic is Juanita Williams, editor at allafrica.com. Welcome. And editor at Daily Voice, Tariq Halim. Welcome, Tariq. And a co-founder and director at, of the Whole World Women Association, Mary Tal. Welcome to all of you. If you've just joined us, you're watching Free Media, Free Minds. And before we talk, and we're going to be talking media and elections, let's take a clip and look at what people have to say about elections. Voting for me is very important. I've never voted before. I couldn't vote in 2009 because I was young. I kind of feel like I'm doing what people did in 1994, now in 2014, because I'm voting for the first time. What do you think about the policies of ANC, DA, and the EFF? Are they any different? Well, policies of the DA and ANC are not that different, but in terms of like redress and transformation, they are different. Have you seen in the news like this week, the DA was busy talking about we recognize race, but we, don't, we are not willing to do anything about it. The ANC is very strict on race matters that it needs to address past imbalances, whereas the DA is still deciding. Well, EFF policies are Zimbabwean policies, as I would like to say. If we would implement them, South Africa would turn into a Zimbabwe. So that is how, that's a rough touch of how I think about their policies. I'd like to have more info on exactly what the policies are. I'd like to have um, in-depth policy documents from every party. I'd like to see debates between leaders of parties. I think we could even have televised debates between the main political parties, you don't have to have the minor ones. Um, I think it's quite difficult for the voters to know exactly what the parties stand for. Um, there's not that much content, there's a lot of puff and stuff around. I'm going to enjoy it. Um, do you, what, has elections actually contributed to us having a good democracy? Oh, for sure. Without a doubt, yeah. Um, How? Well, um, firstly, it, it puts the democratically elected people in parliament. Whatever you might think of them, they've still been elected by the people. Um, it also holds the people, it, and the follow-up elections holds the people to account. I mean, if you look at the National Party and the new National Party, they lost support completely and now they've pretty much disappeared. Um, it'll be interesting to see what happens to COPE in these elections. There have been a lot of problems with them over the last few years and they might also become a very small one or two percent party. So I think that shows that elections hold parties to account. Mm, yeah, so. so what do you think about the role of media during elections or when they're covering elections? Yeah. No, look it's look it's very important and it's and it's and it's very difficult. You have to be a go between between parties and and the public. Um, you have to know that you that what you think you know might not be true. So that's why you have to try and be a, as objective as possible and take your personal political beliefs out of the picture. Um, uh, but on the other hand, you have to write interesting or you have to make videos that are interesting and engage with people. I don't know if the South African press has got it right yet. Um, but you know, maybe, maybe this is the election where we'll do it. Government-owned media companies, they tend to support the, com the, the, um, the party that's leading right now. And that's a bad, that's a huge no-no. You tuned in to Free Media, Free Minds, and we're talking about elections and media. Now, Juanita, as a managing editor at allafrica.com, what is allafrica.com's role in the elections? Allafrica.com's role in the elections is to take the parties, political parties' policies and present it to 
our leaders and our users in a form that they understand. So presenting it in a way that, you know, like in simple language, in a simple language possible, because a lot of the policies are presented in a very sort of complicated language. They tend to, you know, be almost legalese, almost in a legal way it's presented. So I think that's, that's the first thing that needs to be done by a publisher. Now, Tariq, a guy on the cliff mentioned something about the media being the go-between. Is, is, that, is that how it is? Yes, I, I would say so. Um, I think that politicians and leaders rely on the media um, to convey their message to the, the constituency and the public. But uh, at the same time, I think the, um, the response from the, from the public and from the community needs I think they also need to make use of the media to voice their responses to the policies and to the electioneering and campaigning that happens before the elections. So I think it works both ways. Do you reach your, your readers? Um, and are their issues reflected in the way that you deliver your, 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 your media, Juanita? Because um, you have an online audience. Yes, online audience. So all Africa's audience is global. Um, it's mostly African, though. Um, and then in terms of South African elections, what we'll be looking at is analysis and policy, um, sort of on a high level. But what we also want to do is talk to people. So we'll be, we, you know, we're thinking about how we're going to cover the elections, what exactly we're going to do. So it's, it's kind of two-part for us, um, where there's the high-level policy and getting analysis from, you know, people that are, that are in the government system and understand the government system. And then there's the other part, you know, where we get ordinary people, if you want to call them that, um, ordinary people saying what they think about the policies. Uh, but then, uh, before we get, sorry, sorry, Helga, before we get to Tariq, I'm just wondering, what about the people who don't have access to the internet? So how are you getting through to them? Um, internet access has always been an issue and, and will remain an issue in Africa for, for quite a while. Um, mostly because people, you know, people don't have access to, to broadband and that's what you need. What we're seeing is our mobile audience is growing so fast. So that's how we access ordinary people, people that don't have a desktop, people that don't have laptops. Um, smartphones are becoming ubiquitous. They are just everywhere. And you don't really even need a smartphone. You can have an ordinary phone, have some kind of connection. Data is becoming cheaper. And hopefully in South Africa and the rest of the continent will become cheaper still. So that's, that's how we're reaching people. Mobile is, is really the way to go. Yeah. I think that this really reminds me just what Juanita said now about our sh the previous show, or the show that's coming, that we, when, we, when we speak about um, uh, cell phones and the, 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 the prevalence and the importance of cell phones to, 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 to reach a, big, a bigger audience. But before Tariq, and we'll come back to you in a minute, I want to ask, I want to ask Mary, um, the elections that are coming up in 2014, you represent a refugee community. Um, do you think that their issues are going to be part of the election platforms of political parties? Um, I, uh, as you say, I work with the migrant and refugee communities. And uh, the first thing that happens in this, within this community, I don't only think that it's in South Africa, in everywhere in the world, uh, is that the community becomes very afraid, very agitated. Uh, they are so afraid of the results. They are so afraid of what will happen to them. What is their fear based on? Their fear is like with all other elections, it, the instability. A lot of those people are here as a result of rigged elections, as a result of conflicts after elections, as a result of all of those other things that come as a result of bad governance. And I think elections are there to implement good governance. So there's always the fear that there will be a negative result after any elections. Even in the United States of America, where we think is the first country in the world, mm -hmm. there's always fear. So for me, um, talking in the South African context and talking of representing refugee and migrant issues, uh, as far as I'm concerned, this is a personal opinion. And uh, regarding the work that I do and the research that I do, and listening to political, uh, political parties and aligning their policies, not a lot is being done around refugee issues, migrant issues, migration issues, um, 
that I can remember. Mm -hmm. So I don't think that right now in 2014, there's going to be a change in any political party coming up there and advocating to, to improve the lives of refugees and migrants. I think, as far as I know, it is a very insignificant uh, issue that will influence the path of the elections. Tariq, I see you shaking your head. Um, you, your, your newspaper reaches more than 400,000 readers every week. More than 500,000. Almost 500,000 readers every week. Um, do you have any um, comment on, 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 on the issues that, that, that Mary's touched on, particularly um, because refugees and migrant workers are present in working class communities. They live there. Do you think that, that, that your readership have an interest? How, and how do you communicate um, the, 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 the not so topical issues to your readers? It's a very controversial issue and I think government is under pressure to um, to allay fears and to, to um, ease tensions between local communities and foreign communities mm -hmm. from, from other African mm -hmm. countries. Um, historically, in our newspaper, we've covered lots of stories of uh, xenophobic violence or xenophobic sentiments where people feel that, um, that foreigners and, and, and immigrants are taking away the, the jobs and houses and even, uh, even women of, uh, of, of local of, of, of local people. So, um, and for us, it's very important to cover both the, the you know, the, the concerns of the local population, but not to ignore the, the, the concerns of the, the immigrant population who also have real problems, and their problems need to be addressed because they are um, inhabitants um, of our, our city, our country, and our continent, and we have to accept that. And uh, we refuse to take a lot, um, um, a stance that says um, that foreigners should be should leave the country and leave our resources, because um, I don't think that's the kind of um, sentiment that we, as a, as a newspaper, would like to uh, convey. Mm -hmm. okay. um, you're watching Free Media and Free Minds, and we're talking media and elections. We will be taking a short break. Please stay with us. Um, you're watching Free Media, Free Minds, and we'll be right back. last things that you said before our break was about the importance of representing the issues of community. Um, I want to ask, do we still require voter education? I mean, this is our fifth time going to the polls. Do we require voter education? Um, and, and how does the media play its role? Well, I think we do. Uh, voter education is necessary. I think um, for the last two or so elections, um, there's been a growing voter apathy amongst uh, amongst the population. Uh, there's lo there's a growing frustration as well with um, service delivery. But and I think um, the public needs to be made aware of the importance of their vote and that every vote counts. It counts towards the outcome of the election and the the, the way and it determines the way the country will be governed in future. Now, when, when we started out as a, as a newspaper, a tabloid newspaper back in 2005, we started with the brief of um, sport, sex, and Skinner. We were just a, you know, an entertainment paper, an, an easy, you know, a, a fun read. What we didn't realize was how much politics would play a role in, in our content, and um, simply because our readers and uh, the people of the Western Cape and our communities are highly political and um, it was almost foolish to ignore um, people's political ideas and thoughts and, um, and, uh, and how important a role politi politics plays in their lives. And so we've, um, we've almost been forced to, become, to, to publish more politics um, and uh, include more 
political content in our paper because people have issues and views and especially for, for poor people who are directly affected by the um, lack of uh, service, delivery, uh, service delivery and uh, service delivery issues. They want to know what government is doing for them. They want to know what the promises are, what the campaigns are, what the policies are and how it will affect them. And, um, and in that way, I, mean, I think it's, it's absolutely necessary for, for us to, to cover political news and, and voter education and election news. Um, Juanita, with all these issues Tarek is talking about, um, we vote, we, our parents voted in 94, I voted in 2009, nothing has changed that much. So how is it different this time around? It's difficult to say how it's going to be different this time around. I think the voter apathy has happened because it's the fifth, you know, now that we're having the fifth election and people have seen that some things have not changed. Um, it's, it's really been, for me, it's been heartening to see the service delivery protests. I feel that people are standing up for, for what they want. Finally, now they've decided, well, actually, I asked for this and I voted for this and several times I voted for this and it's not happening. Juanita, I want to ask you because there's been some criticisms leveled at the media um, around how they portray and how they skew the narrative of these service delivery protests. Some even say that service delivery protests itself, the term is a euphemism, mm -hmm. that it's something deeper. How do you portray service delivery to your global and your continental audience? See, I think labeling it as service delivery protests is already sort of problematic. It's the, it's the, the language that we use is problematic. Um, it doesn't talk about the fact that people don't have water. You know, it doesn't talk about the pe fact that people don't have proper toilets to use. So it's getting into the actual, getting past the labels, trying to show people, to tell stories, because that's what the media should be doing. It shouldn't say, well, there's a huge service delivery protest and they have been um, blocking the freeway, whichever freeway it is, whichever part of the country it is. It doesn't, that doesn't help people. It doesn't tell them what the story is. Going into a township and saying, um, well, you know, for want of a better, you know, Tandy has um, been living in this township for five years. She has to um, go 500 meters to get to the toilet. She has to, you know, and the toilet is not, it's not an enclosed toilet. She has to, when she goes at night, she feels unsafe. So it's telling those personal stories. And that's where the, the media is a really important tool to telling stories so that people don't, when they're driving in their cars on the freeway, go, you know, these people are doing the service delivery protests again. How irritating. People are actually wanting things done. Mm. And that's why I find it heartening that there's protests. Um, of course, there's been violence. and But, I mean, there are reasons behind it that the anger has been building for so long. That people just, you know, they just, they just broke out. And, I mean, we know that there are political agendas. That some parties are supporting it and say they're not supporting it. Some parties, you know, are saying, well, they have nothing to complain about. Mm. I mean, there's all of those agendas, and that's, that's really problematic. The media needs to show all of those sides of the story. All of the sides of the story. Mary, I want to bring you in here. Your, your, the people that you represent um, have a, a wealth of experience of what you've described earlier, civil war, violence, instability. How do they view South Africa's election the fifth time round in, in relation to the service delivery? Do they think that this is a, a land of milk and honey and opportunity and why are we going out and burning our libraries and, you know? Um, talking about uh, a, a land of milk and honey and the migrant communities, including refugees and asylum seekers, I would say that um, it doesn't come to that as immediate as we can say it. It's a land where everybody works hard for what they have. And if you don't work hard, you don't have anything. Uh, it's not a land of charity. And when there's service delivery, we call it service delivery. Uh, like Juanita said, people need to name the things that people do not have and what people are demanding for. Um, the migrant communities, the refugees and uh, asylum seekers, they are people who have created important activities for themselves and then uh, achieving what is called the land of milk and honey, which means they can earn a living, they can live a life. But when there's service delivery protest, 
they become the first targets because um, they are seen as people who, like Tariq already mentioned, people who have come and taken jobs and taken everything and taken over the whole country itself. Maybe I have to ask you, and I think that many of our viewers, you know, um, 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 have an interest in this question. Yeah. The next, the sixth and the seventh election, yeah. what will be the status of a young Fabrice who came here as a six-year-old mm -hmm. or a newly born souvenir? Mm -hmm. Um, will he be able to, or will, will she, if it is, you know, a young woman, will she be able to vote? Um, historically, uh, as far as the history of South Africa is concerned right now, those children, even who are born of migrant parents uh, who are not South African citizens, will not automatically become citizens. Uh, there's a process that they actually have to go through in order to achieve the status of being a South African citizen. Um, I do understand that in some countries, by virtue of the fact that you are born in a certain country, you do have automatic citizenship. But um, children who are born here, who are even here for more than 21 years and they were born here, they still have to go through those processes in order to attain the level of being able to vote. And if those processes, they are lengthy and tedious and time consuming. So most of those children are still sometimes illegal immigrants. So, but Mary, given the experiences of the people of the refugee community that you represent, is voting the only marker, um, participating in an election, the only way that you can express your participation in a, in a democracy, do you think? I would totally say, uh, to a certain extent, as a human being, you need that political, that civic right to vote. But it doesn't mean that uh, refugees and migrants need to vote in South Africa to be part of the democracy. For me, defining democracy would mean the, my contribution to my community. If I lived in a community, I have to contribute to the safety, to the cleanliness. And I think those are all the aspects that will bring uh, to being a democratic citizen. So I do think in as much as the voting right is extremely important, mm -hmm. it doesn't have to define your status as a democratic citizen. I think that is, that, I mean, uh, it's, it's really, for me who couldn't look forward, who couldn't wait for 1994 to vote because I was eligible to vote, for me voting is democracy. But Tariq, I want to bring you in here. Do you think that politicians and political parties are neglecting an important constituency? Because Fabrice and uh, Souvenir are going to be educated in this country. They're going to be contributing to the economy. Yeah. So what do you think that, that politicians are missing the boat to woo that constituency two elections from now? Hmm. I think it's still a very sensitive issue and I'm not too clued up on, on, on what the, um, I mean what, uh, how the voting rights of, of, of immigrants might change over the next few years but um, yes I mean with the, with the influx of more and more um, immigrants into the country I would say I mean that's, that's probably well into the millions now um, um, that population and uh, I think will play as you say a greater role in the economy in, in, a, in the political landscape of the country. Um, with the, with the, um, yes, um, with the pending secrecy bill, the, it, it, it's raised very serious and, and concerns about the right to information and power of state censorship. So wh what's your opinion on that? On the secrecy bill? Yes. And the challenges that it could represent for editors during an election. Mm -hmm. Well, I think... Obviously, um, the secrecy bill well, hasn't been signed into law yet, which is a good thing. <laughs> and, you know, it's, it's been an ongoing negotiation with the government about um, changes that need to be made. Um, recently, the President Zuma did sign the personal information, the, this, the um, personal information bill. Mm. So, so that has been signed. So, he's, so there's protection of people's personal information, and it depends on how people are going to use that. So it's, it's all about implementation. And I think the dangers around the implementation of the secrecy bill is why the media have been concerned, why ordinary citizens need to be concerned. Because if it's implemented in a way that the loopholes show that they can, can be implemented, it would mean that there would be consequences and you know, implications for people um, not getting the information that they need to decide on who to vote for. So this is hanging over both of you as 
editors, um, both online and in the print, the secrecy bill. How is the, do you think this will contribute to the challenge of covering the elections? For example, there's a, 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 another scandal um, that comes from the ruling party. Or the DA, the Black Caucus in the DA has a, some kind of victory. You know, um, and with, with the sensitive documents coming out. Do you think that is going to challenge you? Yeah, it's funny how these scandals seem to uh, <laughs> only come out, uh, you know, at, in the, in the run-up to, to an election. Um, you know, there have been a few scandals, and uh, yeah, I think they... But the, you did just time it well also, eh? The scandals are all, are, are all very well-timed, and I think well-manipulated. Um, um, I don't think this, the secrecy bill will have an impact on, on, on this election. Um, at, at, at might in, f in, in future, I don't know. It's, it's, it's you know pending discussions in Parliament. I'm glad that um, that the government is still holding discussions and 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 reviewing you know that policy document. Uh, but I think in the run up to an election, I mean all, all the, it's, it's a very exciting time. Um, there's a lot of news coming out. The, Political media machines are in full swing, and it's that they're, they're all going into overdrive. Our newsroom is being, you know, we get faxes and emails nonstop. You know, it, it just clogs up everyone's inboxes. Every political party wants to spread some good news. They want to prove to the, they want to prove to the public what a good job they're doing, in spite of the the protests, ha you know, happening outside. But, their but office. how do you decide? Is it the money or the story? How do we decide? Um, we. Well, you see, that is our role. We have to decode all this media, this political spin, and all the positive press releases, and provide the context and see through the spin and decode it into a language and a, and a context that, that our readers and our audience can understand mm -hmm. so that they don't fall for the, you know, for the bait and that they don't get lured into a, you know, yeah. a, a false sense of security or belief. Talking about good news and spin, Mary, do you think that the media covers the issues of the asylum-seeking and refugee community in a positive way always? Or are they always the victims of crime or the perpetrators of crime? No, I, I would say that uh, the media does a lot of good work and uh, I'm also very worried about the stories that the media covers, sometimes regarding people who are of... Uh, non-South African citizenship. Because sometimes it's not important to say that this person is a non-national who committed this offense. Because... Oh, Mary, I'm sorry to break your word there, but I want to ask you also yeah. in, in what, exactly what you're saying. Yeah. Do you think that the media, that there's a, a, a subtle racism in the way that they portray black immigrants and white immigrants? No, I definitely will not say so. Um, I would say that I have also sympathized with white people being portrayed uh, in the media, uh, by the media, also in very negative terms. I was watching the news just a few days ago, and uh, I, I was not happy about how this white guy was being treated and what was being told about him. And so <laughs> I would definitely say black immigrants fall more victim than the white immigrants, to be fair. But when a white immigrant becomes a victim, they're also trashed. Okay, um, rounding up, uh, what are your hopes for the election process in South Africa for next year? And what do you think is going to be the biggest story of 2014 <laughs> leading up to the election? I think my, my hope, my personal hope, is that it will be peaceful and that we'll be able to go to the polls and, you know, see a positive outcome for whichever party you decide to vote for. I'm not sure what the biggest story is going to be. I think the Western Cape is always a sort of a big issue and, you know, who's going to win the Western Cape? I'm not thinking that there'll be any major change in the Western Cape, but um, one can, can hope that there'll be a more balanced um, overall in the country, a more balanced political representation than we have at the moment. Um, I think that we, we um, people are still voting for the same party, the ruling party, and it would be good if if some of those votes were split around a little bit. Tariq? Tariq? Well, I'm, I'm very excited about this, this, um, this election, this one uh, more so than previous ones. I think there's a great bunch of characters, a uh, great cast of uh, actors in, the, in, in, in this new show. Uh, when we, we, we've got I mean, the usual suspects. We've got Jacob Zuma and Helen Ziller. We've got, uh, now we've got Julius Malema and his red hat. Um, there's um, there's yeah. Kenny Kunene and Gaten <laughs> McKenzie and his new party. Um, who else is on the block? We've Agar. got 
there's 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 Agang Agang with uh, Mampele Rampele. She's also a you know sh she's no pushover. So I think this uh, I'm excited for the for these elections. I think our readers and our newspapers are certainly very excited. But on a more serious note, I think the voters out there, the constituency, need to be educated and they need to go out there and vote. They need to read up on the parties and their policies. They need to know what they're voting for, um, rather, you know, more so than who they're voting for this time. So that when things go wrong and the promises uh, get reneged on, well, yeah. you know, told you so. Mary, last. Um, I, for me, I really just want to wish all South Africans a great election and uh, I want to say that um, I hope that there will be peace in this country <laughs> and that all the political parties will participate in a more uh, democratic manner. No elections rigging should be, so that's my wish. I want to still see a very peaceful South Africa. Thank you to all our guests for joining us. Indeed, 2014 is going to be an exciting year, but it's also the year in which South Africans need to make informed choices. Going to the polls represents indeed the ideals of our freedom. From me, Helga Janssen Daubia. And me, Pumizam Tegazi. Please catch our show, the repeats of our show every Friday morning, 7.30, and Sunday evenings at 10.30. You've been watching Free Media Free Minds. I am ready. We are